Toyota is apparently under fire by 120 scientists and engineers across the world for marketing its hydrogen-powered Mirai car at the Paris Olympics. You heard that right, folks. An open letter from scientists led by David Seaborn from the University of Cambridge argues that hydrogen cars like Toyota's Mirai are derailing the green credibility of the Paris Olympics. Particularly, this concern revolves around Toyota's usage of the Mirai as a taxi within the Paris city, as well as in other areas like in California, where most of their business is currently done. Apparently, for these so-called scientists, Toyota is promoting these cars, buses, and other hydrogen vehicles as a misguided solution to solving climate change. They argue that hydrogen mobility is significantly misaligned with net zero targets, with one of the reasons being that these vehicles require, quote, three times as much as electricity than a battery electric vehicle for equivalent duty. And well, folks, in this video, I'm going to explain to you why exactly they are all wrong. To start things off, folks, let's get a good idea of exactly what this letter entails and who it's targeted towards. David, for those who are unfamiliar, is a professor of mechanical engineering at the University of Cambridge. He hasn't been working in industry for most of his career, where instead he spent time at the Center for Sustainable Road Transport and the University for studying energy, transportation, and urban infrastructure. However, despite this credibility, David has had a negative bias towards hydrogen's use of transportation for a very significant amount of time. And this latest open letter seems to be another one of those marketing gimmicks. And here is at least one of the reasons for why that's the case. First things first, hydrogen doesn't actually use three times as much electricity as a conventional battery EV. The technologies we're comparing here are completely different. A hydrogen fuel cell car is a generator of power instead of a storage medium for power, which is what a battery electric vehicle is. The electricity generated for an electric car comes from somewhere else where energy is generated similar to how you make hydrogen. As a matter of fact, the biggest sources of electricity for a majority of the population centers of the United States come from natural gas, where the conversion to electricity is just around a 50% energy efficient process on a completely similar level to that of hydrogen electrolysis. And what people like David also fail to understand is the idea that Toyota doesn't have an agenda behind selling their Mirai. This vehicle doesn't sell in mass producible quantities in and of itself. Instead, it's an R&D platform for the company to raise awareness about fuel cells for mobility applications. Toyota makes absolutely zero money in their hydrogen business, and neither do they have a business that makes hydrogen to supply these vehicles. As a result, the argument that there is greenwashing happening with Toyota marketing the Mirai at the Paris Olympics is a very unfound and baseless allegation. Toyota sell gasoline and hybrid electric vehicles, which by the way, they invented pretty much around two decades ago. Their credibility in the auto industry is unmatched and accusing them of derailing the green energy transition is an extremely poor misjudgment. What's more is that it's very obvious hydrogen vehicles are not competing in sales numbers. The infrastructure availability isn't there. And so OEMs aren't going to partake in this at a large scale because obviously most consumers in the world will not be able to purchase this product feasibly. The idea is to make sure the ones that can help test and get the ball rolling for R&D and investment, not only for passenger cars, but also for heavy duty trucks, aviation and shipping. And the reason we need that investment is very simple. There are some industries like the production of ammonia, fertilizer, processing of steel and even oil refining where hydrogen is needed as a feedstock. 
Right now, most of this hydrogen is produced through methane and natural gas reforming, which is what Toyota is trying to get against by investing in renewable hydrogen production as well as decarbonizing the broader supply chain. As you start to increase the range requirements as well as the test weight of the vehicle, lithium ion batteries become less and less energy and volumetric efficient. Hydrogen stores around three times as much volumetric energy density as a lithium ion battery in the worst case scenario, which means even though end to end efficiency on math and paper might be lower, the actual economics work out in favor of fuel cells. What's more is that end to end efficiency doesn't determine the scale and usage practicality of a certain technology. Internal combustion engines have been around for a hundred years and they are barely 20% energy efficient at best. The whole supply chain for natural gas and oil refining has also existed, yet consumers have still continued to use it. The idea isn't that percentage efficiency number, it's much more about the practicality it provides in extreme scenarios. Particularly where you have power outages, you don't have continued access to transmission that is green and when you need to perform long duration energy storage. And this folks is where hydrogen and other e-fuels become extremely important. California, which is the best renewable energy economy in the world by far, is facing massive issues with solar curtailment where the grid operators have to purposely throttle back their solar generation in order to avoid congestion. If this is happening in a state like California, Imagine how this will happen when renewable energy penetration skyrockets over 50%, not only in the United States, but even developing countries across the world. There are going to be serious grid related implications. Hydrogen is known to be a very good source of storing energy over long periods of time. Meaning when you're producing solar and there isn't demand for it, you can store it in hydrogen and store it for weeks, days, and months without having to use it and only using it on demand through a fuel cell. Batteries can only store and discharge energy at peak capacity for just around 8 to 12 hours at best, and we need longer duration storage technologies to come online faster than ever before. What's more is that we need to reduce our reliance on the physical electric grid itself based on how quickly power outages are happening as well as different issues with grid related charges. Hurricane Beryl, for example, has destroyed the power capacity of Houston for almost 2 million residents at a time, which obviously even with the production of solar and wind can't be avoided. But instead, if you have microgrids or storage of hydrogen, for example, where there are electricity generators using fuel cells, you can get sufficient power backup with absolutely no additional cost. And this is where fuel cell EVs can become a viable option down the line as this back-end production of hydrogen increases. Wholesale cost of hydrogen is already on par with diesel, even though retail cost, as seen at pumps from True Zero and Zero Avia across California, are obviously much more expensive because of the lack of demand. However, as production increases, and we start to see more and more fuel cell vehicles on the road, prices are naturally going to start to fall. And that is exactly what Toyota is planning to bet on. But as usual, folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and thank you very much for watching.